Hello, this is Jobis here. Today, uh, I just wanted to welcome you to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, this archaeological find, a uh, pretty recent find, and it was sent to me by one of my friends. He's interested in these things, but doesn't know as much about it. So he always asks me um, for my opinion. Uh, what are my credentials to talk about uh, something like this that's archaeological or historical related? I have a um, bachelor's and master's degree, both in history. And I have a minor degree in archaeology, and I've done, I don't know, five field seasons of work doing archaeology in Jordan. Uh, it's five months collectively. So um, you could say I'm, I'm not like the most experienced. I've got a long way to go. I'm pretty early in my career, but I do have a lot of uh, knowledge about this. So I just want to dive in. Uh, this is from the Smithsonian Magazine, and they reported on... Um, groundbreaking find three kinds of early humans on Earth living together in South Africa. Now, I have not read this before. These are just reaction videos. Uh, I'm going to read it with you, basically, and give my uh, thoughts on it. So, let's see. Three kinds of early humans. So, for those of people who don't know, there are actually many different kinds of, we'll say, humanoid creatures, right? Because I we don't know the full complexity. So, they use the term humans. Um... In my view, a human is a Homo sapiens. Um, there are other species that predated and kind of up into the point. Homo sapiens are the only ones that survived. And there's a lot of speculation about, well, there's there are scientists have kind of figured out that um, there's uh, one of the other species, Neanderthals, uh, actually mated with Homo sapiens. And so a lot of Homo sapiens today have some Neanderthal in them. So we're kind of a combination of those two. Uh, modern Homo sapiens are. Um, there's other ones, uh, most notably Homo erectus and Australopithecines, so the two I could think of off the top of my head. And as you can see here, they, they talk about they're going to talk about Homo erectus. So um, I don't, we don't, I don't, scientists, I, I don't know how well they can actually prove the, you know the the sentience of these species, but some of them, especially Homo erectus, are tool users, tool workers. Um, they had um, hands that could fashion and use tools. Now we're talking pretty primitive. We're talking basically just rocks that are shaped in different ways. They didn't, and I think they did purposefully shape these rocks much like, you know, um, what we think of as, of, of Homo sapien people in the uh, Stone Age and prehistoric people did. Um, it's pretty much like that, although at times it's even more primitive than that. Um, so that's what this, that's what this is going to talk about. Um, whether or not Homo erectus actually had language, or was a, had the ability to think like Homo sapiens, um, I don't know, and I don't know if scientists know or will ever be able to know because I, I don't know if they created art or anything like that. So that's going to dive into a deep philosophical discussion about what makes something a human, and I don't necessarily want to dive into that today. But if you want to, you can post that in a comment, and we can find some different research together and uh, have that discussion. But anyway, so let's see what they found. So they found three kinds of early humans on Earth living together in South Africa. Um, just a deep dive into some histories. Uh, just close that. That's not letting me close it. Um, Africa primarily is where they found these other types of species. They also have found a number of different types in Asia. Um, particularly China, but also in uh, Indonesia. There's the Java man, I believe he's called. Uh, Java man is, I think, Australopithecines. At least it's, it's a smaller type. And so, um, yeah. So, but um, South Africa and the southern half of Africa, especially, is where they found a lot of these. That's why they believe there's this out-of-Africa theory that all of, essentially, mankind came out of Africa and spread into the Middle East and then spread into Europe and then spread into Asia and everything like that. So they really think Africa is the birthplace of all these humanoid type species. All right, um, so here we've got them excavating um, in the region's hills and caves. Yep, I've watched some documentaries about them exploring South Africa and, and they actually have gone deep, deep down into some caves there. And that's where they've actually found bones and things because they've been preserved and um, I think they've discovered that some groups actually lived in these caves. It was shelter. They didn't really build their own shelter. They either lived in caves or I don't know. I don't know enough. Of, I don't know enough about this stuff because this is 
predating the periods that I'm super interested in, but just thought we'd look at it. This is from April 2nd, so it's pretty recent. Um, right. Scientists studying the roots of humanity's family tree have found several branches entangled in and around a South African cave. I'm not going to read every single line. If you want to go find this article, this is on the Smithsonian Mag. Um, dot com. And it's called In Ground Waking Find Three Kinds of Early Humans and Earth Living Together in South Africa. And the author is Brian Handwork. Go look it up. Give him some likes. Comment on it if you want. Uh, make sure that these authors are getting their um, notoriety. I'm just going to comment on it. So, um, two million years ago. So that, that's, that's what this dates to. So, they say three different early humans, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and the earliest known Homo erectus appear to have lived at the same time in the same place. Uh, that is pretty cool. Near the Jermolian Paleo Cave System. Um, okay. Right. And so, the general thought is that... Um, possibly, be if we came, if we came away out of, um, primate species, because primates two million years ago were not the same as primates today, um, there are different types of humanoids between a primate and a homo sapiens, and so, um, but a lot of these are actually coterminous, so it's not a direct, you know, it's not like a Australopithecus went into Homo erectus, which then went into Homo sapiens, it's more Australopithecus lived, and then kind of at the same time like Homo erectus lived, and then at the end of Homo erectus, Homo sapiens kind of came about, and it's not like it's direct lineage one to, from one to the next. So don't take that away, because that's not what happened, that we know of. Um, you, we know that the old idea that when one species occurs, another goes extinct, and you don't have much overlap, that's just not the case. So I think that used to be the thinking, you know, of 100 years ago when they were starting to find all these other types of species. Um, but now they've discovered a lot of them lived at the same time, and so they, they can't possibly evolve into one another if they're living at the same time, right? That doesn't happen. Um, says So um, that's what this guy is saying, this paleoanthropologist. Three species, one place. Um, Australopithecus africanus is the most primitive of the trio. Okay. So they found that. It's got ape-like attribute, attributes, including long tree-climbing arms. Um, and we don't know the relationship of that to modern humans. They f and it's thought that died out two million years ago. Paranthropus robustus. I don't actually know that much about this. It says an offshoot of the human family tree, not considered to be a direct human ancestor. Known for large, powerful jaws and teeth that could pulverize. Wow. Interesting. So that's probably, you know, probably more ape-like mouth, jaws. Then Homo erectus. Uh, it's the first ancestor of modern humans to have human-like proportions. And the first to appear outside of Africa. Yeah, so that's a big deal. Um, interesting. That's interesting. So all these three were kind of found together. And this, all right, this is not working. I'm going to refresh this page. Stop it. There we go. It's loading. Somewhat. No. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yep. And these are the types of cave sites that they go into there in Africa. Um, they have no doubt that what they have something that is of the genus Homo. But it's an incomplete skull. And most of what they find are incomplete skulls. So it's hard to know 100% if it's Australopithecus or Paranthropus. They generally have enough complete skulls found elsewhere that they're able to match them up. But uh, it's it's difficult. Furthermore, the cranium belongs to a two or three year old. Ah. Yeah, and then that's really hard. You know what I mean? I mean, how do you know that that doesn't develop later on into something else? So... They're not sure that 100% that they have Homo erectus. Right. And they have to make... Sh they have to really make sure that the, that child skull is Homo erectus because they say that if it is, then it's the earliest known in the world. So whenever you're dealing with something that's going to go down in history for at least a time as the earliest known, and that's going to redefine what we think about these things, you really got to make sure. Out of Africa or within Africa... 
Um, so they're asking, how did the species arrive in South Africa? Uh, one possibility that Homo erectus originated here, sure, and then out of it. But he said, they say that the discovery of the oldest known bones... Wait, what happened to it? This page, I don't like this. Doesn't necessarily mean Homo erectus started in this locale. Perhaps they migrated. Yep, that's true, too. They could have actually started in Asia. We just haven't found old enough bones in Asia to prove that. So you're just speculating at that point. It seems that Homo erectus and Paranthropus and stone tools all suddenly occur in South Africa at this point. Right, that suggests they've got movement. To me, that also suggests they've got competition, right? Because um, if, you've got, if you've got no competition for food or for shelter... Um, and it's easy to get food, you don't need tools, and you don't need to improvise, you don't need to innovate, you're just going to stay doing what you're doing. That's, that's pretty typical. But if there's different types of species all congregating in a similar area, and maybe food scarf, you're going to need to improve your food gathering, so you're going to innovate tools and new ways to collect your food, to work your food, um, and things like that. And... They also use tools for making clothes and things like that. So, right, we talk about out of Africa a lot, but the hominids, that's the general term, didn't know they were going out of Africa, they were just moving. Correct, yeah. It's not like they had one bright idea one day, like, let's leave Africa. No. <laughs> they just migrated around, typically following food or possibly changing areas because of climate. Which I don't know if they'll address in this article, and it's two million years ago, so it's hard to know a lot about the climate. Well, they actually do know a lot. Um, right. They cite some evidence for non-hominid migrations that may lend weight. Okay. Yep. So they do talk about environmental factors. So an extinct prehistoric zebra and springbok, probably some sort of small deer, appear at South African sites during the same time, suggesting some environmental factors spurred their sudden migration. Yep, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So maybe they were following some sort of new food sources. Um, okay. They say this, this period is one of the prolonged very high climate variability, so it's one of the right conditions for animals to be moving around. If it was a migrant, Homo erectus would have moved to an area that was already occupied by other ancient hominids and shared the same landscape with them for a significant time. So they're sharing geographical spaces with other types of hominids. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is pretty big. Because we don't know how much these different types of species interacted. Because we don't even know if, like, how well they, if they spoke anything and if they would be able to communicate very well like i don't know do do you like baboons today communicate with chimpanzees or with gorillas like i have no idea i don't study that that's that's social anthropology and i don't study that necessarily i don't study animals um we talk a lot about yeah see here they're talking about diverse species coexisting with ne neanderthals modern humans and denisovans i don't know what that is i'm gonna have to look that up denisovans we'll look that up um, right, but they don't see that with earlier stuff, so this is one of the first instance, instances that they've seen that. Dating dilemma, okay. Jamolian Paleo Cave, I want to know what these things are. Denisovans. Denisovans. Ex okay. Alright. Oh, in New Guinea. So it's a New Guinea type of subspecies. Cool. Something Learn something new. Um, how do they date this? So, so this cave system is part of South Africa's UNESCO World Heritage Site called the Cradle of Mankind. So I wonder if this is close to Lucy. No, Lucy is further north, I think. Um, Lucy is the oldest hominid that we found. At least it was the first oldest one. I don't know if we found something older than that, but that's with Lucy's with the old out of Africa um, theory came out of. So if you want to know about that, just Google Lucy and out of Africa and you'll learn about that. I'm not going to go into that today. Um, more than 900 fossils have been found representing at least five different species. That's pretty cool. 
but it's really hard to date these, right? East Africa's rich valleys. Um, they have layers of volcanic ash that can be me dated by measuring the decay of radioactive elements. So that's one way. Okay. But the problem is they're not in the East Africa Rift Valley. The East Africa Rift Valley is where they found Lucy. In the South African caves... Okay, yep. Older fossil field selections have collapsed in the low area, so they can't date these. And modern humans have operated mines in the area, so it's... Yeah, you don't have soil. Like, you can dig down in tr traditional archaeology and date the different layers. So... It's... Yeah, it's really complicated. That's a headache to date. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to date that stuff. Harry's specializes in geochronology. It's a small cavern that was deposited in a short period when water sunk into the cave. Interesting. Oh, Earth's magnetic field flipped? What? If that flips again, everything we've got is messed up. <laughs> Modern technology, if it flips. I had briefly heard that before, but... Um, so we know when the magnetic changes happen, so then they date based on... They can tell in the layers when it flips, because that changes the way things, like, operate. So they can date that. That's, that's cool. It leaves The event leaves magnetic patterns in volcanic rock. Especially in lava. So that's neat. That's really cool. Um, but that's not gonna be very specific, right? You're gonna get you're gonna get very broad scope doing it that way. But using the known rate at which uranium decays, yep. Into lead, the team dated a tiny flow stone in the middle of the cave formed by minerals to about one point nine five million years ago, just in time for the magnetic field reversal. Mm-hmm. I wonder if these magnetic field reversals are anything like if we could if they could if the hominoids could somehow like feel them or I don't know if you could I don't know if you'd notice I have no idea. Um, the team also dated molars using electron spin resonance techniques. I don't really know how that works, so look that up if you want to know. I don't really get into all the scientific aspects of archaeology like that. It's less interesting to me. I like the cultural, I'm more of a cultural anthropo uh, archaeologist, I would say. Uh, Potts was among those convinced by the dating, so he's trusting the dating techniques, found himself more impressed by the significance of the multi-species fossil find. Yeah, something that until now was only seen in northern Kenya's Turkana Basin, where four hominid lineages once coexisted. So this has been seen before, but not as old as this, I think is what they're saying. Um... Yeah. So now they're seeing that not just in East Africa, but also in South Africa, they've got these different species coexisting. So there you go. That's all that this article is about. Um, hopefully you learned something new about it. Uh, there's no comments to look at. Uh, even though this came out 22 days ago. Um, go look at these pictures if you want. I'm not going to show them too long. I don't want to get any copyright infringement. So, um, make sure you, um, comment and like, go follow this guy if you want to see more about, uh, what he's writing. I don't know who he is. There's a lot of writers out there. So, there you go. Um, Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and the earliest known, Homo erectus. Um, so again, this is demonstrating that Australopithecus did not evolve into Homo erectus, and Paranthropus also did not evolve into Homo erectus because you're not going to have them coexisting at the same time if they're evolving into something new. That's not how evolution works. So, um, uh, any questions about this? Let's see. I don't. I haven't really. Stu I've only studied this briefly in a college course. So, um, from what I can remember, this it changes. I mean it. It doesn't really shake any foundations that I've known before. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting, and it gets me to thinking about cultural interactions between these groups and what that would have been like. Um, so, I mean, we do see that Homo erectus is the one that continues on, and, and Australopithecus and Paranthropus are the ones that pretty much end. So whether or not Homo erectus 
um, eradicated them on purpose. We don't know. Or maybe Homo erectus was just a s different type of species that was just better at surviving in those areas and had developed tools to survive where Australopithecus and Paranthropus did not, right? Could be a situation like that. So you're kind of seeing the end of an era for two subspecies and the beginning for another. Um, which would happen again with Homo sapiens outdoing Homo erectus and Neanderthals, right? So we're, we are the culmination of Homo sapiens ingenuity. Um, and that's it. So there we go. Hope that you enjoyed this. Hope that you uh, learned something new. Um, if you have any questions about uh, archaeological finds that you see pop up, just uh, let me know. Leave a comment on any of my YouTube videos uh, on archaeology. And I'll take a look at them. If there's anything you want me to look at and review or comment on. Uh, or any topics you want to hear me say. So there we go. Uh, hope that you are staying safe and you have a good rest of your day. Take care.